Welcome, my name is Lise Loretissa. I'm a PhD student at Leiden University and Delft University of Technology. And today I'll be presenting our research on using 3D scanning to support conservation treatment for paintings. In the field of conservation, there are many technologies available to visualize issues regarding a painting's appearance. Technical photography is typically used to visualize and document a condition and the conservation treatment of paintings and to monitor conservation treatments such as flattening deformations and removing unwanted varnish layers. Visible light, raking light, and more recently a more advanced method called reflectance transformation imaging, or RTI, are a couple of commonly used techniques. The presence of varnishes and retouches are typically identified and located using ultraviolet fluorescence. However, these techniques cannot always visualize or quantify conservation issues. So in order to overcome this issue, I uh, and Wilhelmijn Alkaiser from TU Delft have approached uh, the conservation specialist at Stichting Restauratie Atelier Limburg in Maastricht and the uh, master students of the conservation and restoration master in uh, Amsterdam uh, to test a new technology that captures elements that contribute to a painting's appearance. With the device, an artwork's color, gloss and topography can be measured and visualized and for this reason the technology is named Color Gloss and Topography Imaging, or CGT in short. But the man Alkaiz originally designed this technology for the purpose of measuring and replicating the appearance of paintings using advanced 3D printing technology. However, uh, as CGT is a photographic method and therefore a non-invasive method, recent research has pointed out that the technique might also support documentation and potentially also conservation treatments of paintings. So in order to analyze the potentials and the drawbacks of this technology. Uh, we have compared uh, color gloss and topography imaging uh, to already existing methods such as visible light, breaking light and RTI. Uh, we've also included three case studies uh, to see um, what this technology is capable of. Uh, all of these case studies have different conservation dilemmas such as uh, gloss variations resulting from previous cleaning tests varnish removal and possibly dirt and material degradation. These are the three uh, case studies. Two of them are portraits painted by the same artist and one is a larger painting uh, of St. Peter. Uh, we've applied the same process to uh, these paintings. Uh, however, we did not scan them entirely, uh, but we chose a couple of areas in which there was or there seemed to be extraordinary material behavior. Uh, so firstly, I will explain um, uh, and elaborate a little bit more uh, on the already existing technologies. On the left you can see an Im image uh, taken with visible light photography, which is a commonly used documentation method to record the current state of con or condition of paintings. Uh, it is the fastest and most ready to use method to capture the painting's current state and colors. However, it does not provide any information on the painting's texture or gloss. So on the right we see a raking light image of the uh, painting. Uh, which does help in showing some uh, uh, slight textural differences. Um, as using a low angle light source uh, that is placed almost parallel to the surface, uh, cast shadows on the surface, some textural differences can be captured. However, both technologies uh, lack a standardization and documentation of the process uh, and the exact parameters. So we found that the repeatability and the comparability with and within and between the cases of these uh, techniques is very low. Uh, therefore, in order to obtain a fuller set of data, uh, the students uh, decided to take some RDI images of the smaller portraits. Um, as these graphs show, RDI is done by taking multiple shots at different angles and by using different light directions. Uh, these images are put in the RTI software developed by Cultural Heritage Imaging, which can be downloaded for free. Uh, in which an algorithm calculates um, the gaps in the lighting setup and replicates the shadow cast over the whole surface from the data derived from the set of images that are taken uh, during the process. Uh, you can then use an interactive viewer to cast light from different angles to identify textual changes, as this uh, video shows. However, it's important to keep in mind that these uh, filled gaps are not based on facts. Uh, and the standardization of the process is not possible. Uh, further I, uh, furthermore, RTI does not separate between color, texture and gloss, which means that the results can be interpreted wrongly. 
And as you can see here on the RTI, the texture is just a suggestion of the irregularities that might happen on the real painting. Uh, and because we cannot filter out color or even uh, when converting these images to black and white, um, it gives a distorted uh, understanding of the highs and lows of the painted surface. Uh, we therefore thought that RTI was not objective enough and therefore we decided to uh, use this technique instead. So in contrast to RTI, the color gloss and uh, topography imaging system does not use one fixed camera uh, with multiple light sources, but instead consists of a self-moving X and Y axis that carries a platform of three cameras, a beaver and one light source. That way it consists of two modules, one that captures the topography and color, and the other one that uh, captures the spatially varying gloss. The topographic uh, scanning mo module uses two cameras that are mounted on 40 degree angles uh, relative to the painting's surface normal. And that way uh, the topography is triangulated. And the light source uh, is a projector which illuminates the surface that is positioned parallel to the painting surface. And um, the gloss is measured by utilizing the polarization of reflectance which is uh, pre produced by illuminating a painting surface with an LED array source placed at a 56 degree angle uh, to the painting the surface normal. Uh, the surface gloss is recorded by a camera which has a polarization filter fit, uh, fitted to the lens, which is also mounted uh, on the platform, uh, but on the opposite side of a 56 degree angle. Uh, the pictures are then taken with and without the reflection of the surface and uh, when uh, the results of these scans uh, result in height maps that can be processed in two different ways. So uh, firstly uh, the data can be plotted as is where the visualization range is used to show complete height variation of the surface. So for example bulging and uh, larger losses. This, is, uh, this can be seen on the fourth image where uh, uh, the more yellow the surface is, the higher uh, the surface is, and the darker the lower. So uh, the lowest fre uh, frequency can also be filtered out, which can be seen on the second image. Uh, so that way um, uh, it can better visualize high frequency variations of the surface. Um, these would otherwise be less visible, so uh, because there would be a lack of contrast. So uh, this can be helpful in showing the canvas weave or the crack pattern of the painting. Uh, on the bottom left you can see the gloss map, uh, which is generated and projected onto these topographical maps. And these images are visualized in grayscale. And the lighter uh, the region, the higher the glossiness and uh, darker the region, the matter or the less gloss uh, can be seen. Um, the technology itself relies on the projection of a fringe pattern uh, uh, that is casted on the painting and on stereo imaging. That way the topography of the painting surface can be uh, triangulated. The surface reflection is filtered out by cross-polarizing um, the illuminant or uh, the light that comes from the projector and its cameras. The captures capture uh, the surface area of 148 by 91 millimeters, so larger surfaces consist of multiple images mosaic together. Uh, overlaps are built into the positioning of the cameras as well. So now we will move on to our case studies, of which the first one is the male portrait. Um, this portrait shows a deformation of the painting's crack pattern as a result of the application of a label to the reverse of the canvas support, as can be seen at the top left. Uh, while the RTI shows that there is a deformation and shows that the texture is different, it cannot be accurately imaged um, simultaneously over the whole surface of the entire label. So here you can see uh, the results of the CGT scanning, of which the first one is a more uh, detailed and high frequency map, so yellow is high, blue is lower. Uh, and this clearly shows the depth of the deformation and even shows uh, some of the underlying canvas. Um, the global height map shows that uh, there is some bulging in the area as well due to the fact that the canvas has been glued to the stretcher bars of the painting. Um, in the painting that was painted by the same uh, artist, um, it shows a different uh, build up in layers. Um, so there is no evidence that there has been a ground layer and the paint 
uh, has uh, only been applied thinly and loosely at parts of the so for that reason uh, parts of the canvas are exposed now uh, discolored varnish layers have been obscured uh, and they obscure the original colors uh, and previous cleaning tests have caused an irregular appearance and an uneven surface gloss so uh, the UV image uh, on the top right it clearly shows uh, these uh, previous dirt removals uh, which shows in the fluorescence of the varnish layer below uh, in this case, the color gloss and topography imaging was able to detect and visualize gloss differences uh, where the RTI specular enhancement image shows no sign of such gloss differences, uh, which would be expected as the revealed varnish surface should be considered glossier uh, without the matte effect of the dirt layer. And our last uh, case study uh, gave us the opportunity to see if the color gloss and topography imaging could be used to record and establish the effectiveness of the removal of varnish and, and non-original layers. So the painting's original paint surface was obscured by thick yellow varnish layers, which are in the process of being removed as part of an ongoing treatment. Uh, visualizing uh, the areas with higher glossiness, uh, which indicate an incomplete removal of the varnish, helped in identifying the location and the size of the areas that required further treatment. So in this case, you can see that the gloss map proved to be more suitable for this purpose than the UV photographs that can be seen in the middle uh, of the three uh, images, uh, which are usually used to identify uh, uh, varnish removals or uh, changes of the, the paintings appears due to these uh, removals. Uh, as for the topography, in this case, the varnish layers were too thin to detect because they were below 20 microns. Uh, so they could not be measured effectively with the color gloss and topography imaging. However, the structure of the fillings applied previously uh, into losses uh, in the painted layer can to some extent be recognized in the height map due to subtle discontinuity of the uh, canvas weave. However, we thought that this recognition still relied strongly on a direct comparison with the painted surface uh, in order to confirm that the discontinuity in the height maps were caused by the fillings. Uh, therefore, in this case, the height map did not facilitate the conservation process at present uh, regarding this aspect. So, in contrast, the gloss maps were way more useful uh, than the topography maps in this uh, instance. So, what these case studies have shown us uh, is that uh, the color gloss and topography's uh, capacity to register gloss topography and color provides more accurate data concerning the material behavior and its effects on the aesthetics of paintings than the previously uh, used methods. So the gloss maps, for instance, are convenient in documenting the efficacy of the varnish removal, for, uh, for example, um, but also because it exceeds the capacities of UV photography. Overall, uh, we think that the CGT scan produces more detailed images with much higher resolution, uh, especially compared to RDI uh, the color gloss and topography imaging was found to be able to accurately document variations in gloss and topography, whereas RTI was revealed to be misleading in some cases. Uh, we also think that CGT is capable to uh, generate a quantified measurement compared to the other uh, techniques. However, we must also mention that the technology has some limitations. Uh, firstly, because it is not uh, precise enough, is it because it cannot uh, determine differences smaller than 30 microns. Also, fluctuations in the canvas weave or impastos too large are a problem. And uh, furthermore, the process was very time consuming and it's very complex to set up the uh, equipment as well. Uh, despite these limitations, however, we think that the future technological developments of this technology show great potential. Uh, for the field of art conservation, for example, we can use uh, the results of the scanning to 3D print uh, specific areas, for example, the flattened surface of the male portrait. Furthermore, using these scans as serum measurements and repeating the scans uh, over time, this technology allows for consistent monitoring of the efficacy of conservation treatments. Additionally, at present, uh, the identification of fillings in painted layers from subtle discontinuities in height maps is very time consuming due to a need of continual comparison to the painted surface. So future research may focus on developing methods for an optimization of the process for this instance. 
So I want to thank you for your uh, time and paying attention to our presentation. Uh, me and the whole team want to thank you.